But uh, Wes, you pointed out uh, we're going to have a real championship conversation coming up now because our next guest has played as well as anybody in amateur golf uh, on the male side this summer. This guy's been fantastic, and he's fresh off of winning the U.S. Amateur Championship. Uh, Tyler Strafashi joins us now. Tyler, how you doing, buddy? Good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for uh, having me. This is this is awesome. Well, congratulations. You have uh, really, really been golfing your ball this summer. Um, is there something that you look back, maybe in the spring, where maybe you found something or confidence-wise, and you said, you know what, I'm about ready to just go on a run? Uh, yeah, it's kind of tough to see a specific moment during the actual season. Um, I would say one of the turning points was seeing Andy win the AM last year, and you kind of get – some sort of confidence from that and you're just looking forward to potentially doing that next year and then all the COVID stuff hit and our season got canceled um so I wanted to use that two or three months that I was back home kind of hanging with my parents to use it as a positive and get better and not dwell on all the negativity going on and just just approach it with a very positive outlook and I thank my parents for that because they really helped me with that Tyler, it seems kind of simplistic to ask this question, but how much did winning the North and South carry over to last week at Bandon Dunes? Yeah, so I, I mean, before the North-South, I hadn't uh, won a golf term in three, almost four years. Um, so mm. there was definitely kind of added pressure on that, and it was just so cool to win it there at, with such a special place like Pinehurst, and you kind of get – a lot of confidence from it, obviously, and you're just looking forward to doing it again, and I did it the next week, and then you're looking forward to doing it again, you keep working hard, and it just, everything just really came together during that USN, the last round, I played played really good, and I finally putted good, I putted so poorly all week, and I just couldn't really apply that much pressure, and kind of pushed my opponents too much until the final match. And I was lucky I'd putted really good because Ollie played phenomenal. Uh, from my understanding, uh, given uh, some uh, background information and research that I give all the props to Tim Beret, uh, he pointed out to me the other day that you've now won 14 consecutive match play events. Well, were you aware of that? Wow. Uh. I wasn't aware of the 14. I was aware of going to the final match. I won 10 in a row just because of the north and south. Um, but, yeah, it's been – match play has always been one of my strengths because the good thing is about my game is that I'm usually pretty consistently around the green or in the fairway, so I'm not really out of many holes. So usually to beat me in a match, you're going to have to play pretty good. And if I – if I play someone that's playing well, if I don't play well, I'm going to lose. That's just the art of match play. And you kind of saw that in the first match, Ollie just, or the last match, Ollie just played great in the morning and still played really good in the afternoon, but he didn't make many putts. And I just caught up to him over time. Tyler, what's the key, though, in match play? Because it is very different than stroke play. I mean, there's, a, there's also a little cat and mouse game going on uh, literally at all times. But So what is the nuance about match play where you kind of get in that comfort zone. I mean, you were great down the stretch in all these matches in which, hey, we're getting down to 16, 17, this thing's tied. And you know what? Eventually you just kind of say, hey, well, I've been there so many times. Let's just go win this thing. But what are the nuances about match play that make you so good? I would say just being a really good ball striker. Again, I'm throughout the match, I'm usually not out of many holes. Um, so I kind of just wear my opponent out over time. So if you hit a lot of greens and you give yourself a lot of birdie putts, your opponent kind of knows that they're not going to be able to make any pars and beat you throughout the round. Um, and I kind of gear my game towards that. Kind of once I hit match play, I make sure I hit fairways and I make sure I kind of put it on the green so I'm always putting for birdie. And I mean, I didn't do that too well in a Mons match where I gave up a four, four up lead coming down the stretch, but you know, that's golf. Um, I'm really actually happy I did that because I don't think I would have won the finals if I didn't because mm. you have to overcome so much in that in that kind of you're just you're just so embarrassed when you give up a four up lead, not gonna lie, and you 
you accomplish that semifinal win and then you just you go into the finals and you kind of reflect back on that and it was really it was really good to get that done okay so when you get to this there's the mechanics of playing right the match and and China winning 36 holes it's 36 holes on Sunday uh then there's the the physical nature of doing that then there's the mentality you've already talked about and then there's the contributing mentality. And Coach Hepler was with us a couple of days ago and said something about, I mean, all of a sudden, I know you're friends with Andy Ogletree. You guys are roommates and buds and things like that. But then you start getting texts from guys like Matt Kuchar. Who else did you hear from that helped you get ready for Sunday after Saturday's semifinal win? Yeah, I mean, I would say mostly it was just friends and family, to be honest. Kuchar's text really meant a lot. Um, but it was like my – just spending the night with my parents and my mom and brother, and they're sharing their input on what they saw. And also my coach, Todd Anderson, he, uh, he really kind of just got me dialed in. I, I listened to him for 30 minutes on the phone while I putted, and he kind of he kind of got ripped into me a little bit and just said, you can't get negative. You got to, tomorrow is going to be a marathon. It's going to be a 36-hole race, and if you're not prepared for it and you get down, he could have a, stretch coming down the stretch where he, he just buries you um but yeah I would say I'm just so thankful that I have so many people in my corner that love and care about me and coach Hepler is definitely one of those people and I'm very thankful for him Tyler I know every golf course is different did it help having great success at Pinehurst and then going out to Bandon Dunes I mean I know golf courses are totally different but you know you get around the greens you got to get it up and down as you well know and those may be two of uh, the most testing test in terms of, hey, if I miss a green, yeah, you'll have a lot of options, but, man, you better execute it to perfection. Yeah, so, I mean, Pinehurst is, I don't know if you guys have played there. It's sure. If you miss a green, you're most likely making bogey. Um, and that's the great thing about match play. You can be kind of more aggressive during those matches when you're off the green and you can you can force your hand and make a couple more pars, but... Here, here, as much as anything, if you got on the wrong side of a knob missing the green, I don't care how good you were, you weren't getting that thing up and down. Um, so, yeah, you're, that definitely influences you throughout the round because you're like, I don't want to miss it there. Um, but you don't want to miss on the other side. So you kind of have to just hit a good shot and <laughs> just live with the result. Like 15 was the greatest example. I mean, you guys, I don't know if you guys watched that semifinal thing, but yeah. the best score in that hole was a double. Because there yep. is no good place to hit it. You're just, you're just hidden and hoping at that point. Um, just hoping you hit a good shot. Because I hit a great shot in that match, and it just rolled over the back. And, or I hit a great shot, and it kicked off the right and went 50 yards from the green and made a nice little triple. So that was, that was fun. But, <laughs> yeah, it was – it was uh, – <laughs> yeah, that, that course was awesome. It's only I'm, one hole, Tyler. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I I got over it pretty quick, but <laughs> So so what was it like on Sunday? Did you have any of the marine layer roll in at all during the week or was Sunday the first time that that became uh, oh. you know, I saw your dad one time it looked like he's going to put a miner's hat on and walk out about 50 yards and shot it down the fairway for you. I mean, what was that like? Yeah, I mean I've played in that before, playing at Pebble Beach in the AM and playing at Olympia Olympic Club in San Francisco. So yeah, that that video right there does no justice. Like you phys I we physically could not have seen more than 50 yards in front of us. Mm. Um, mm. So that's it. Just took a while. Um, for the most part, on those holes, I had to hit first, and like right there, like 30 second hole, the 14th hole you couldn't see my dad pointed way right because you couldn't see the green in normal daylight you're like <laughs> you can see that green so I kind of had to go yeah. first and be the guinea pig and I kind of just wanted to make sure I got that line down because it's they moved tees around there was different angles so it was kind of tough to get comfortable and adjusted you know just within our conversation you've talked about Piners number two Bandon Dunes Olympic Club Pebble Beach I mean incredible places that golfers would dream to play uh, have you given it thought about standing on the 12th tee at Augusta National and the wind may be going left to right, swirling? Do I hit nine? Do I hit eight? I mean, you're going to the Masters, my man. Uh, how cool oh, is that? 
It's so cool. And me and my teammate, Bart Forrester, were actually talking about it last night while we were watching a movie. And I was like, Bart, I don't think I'm going to get that first tee shot airborne. I'm going to be so <laughs> nervous. Um, just because we've been, we've been talking about this moment since we were kids. I'm like, Hep's told a story about his first time at Augusta. He snipe hooked into a bench. And I'll be, I'll be just happy to do slightly better than that, to be honest. Once I, once I get out there, I'll be fine. But um, I haven't played in a major in a couple of years. So it's, it's going to be just like another term once you get out there. But just all that suspense leading up to it, it's going to be, it's gonna be uh, you're going to be feeling it. Um, so I'm looking forward to it, and it's going to be fun. You know what? It's all about the uh, practice rounds at Augusta National, Tyler. Come on now. Yeah. I mean, you're in Atlanta. <laughs> Georgia Tech's got a great history with Augusta National. Get down there and shake off the rust, shake off the nerves in the practice rounds, my man. We'll do that. Um, I'm hoping to get to play there a good bit over the next year. I'm going to make sure they kick me out of the tournament. I'm going to be there so much. Uh, it's just going to be so cool. I'm going to use, I'm going to use everything I can. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be their worst nightmare at the end of the week because I'm going to be always there. I love the attitude. By the All way, right, where me, is the USAM trophy right now? Where is that uh, sucker? Where is it? It's it's down here. Um, I'll pick it up for you guys. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Let's see this bad boy. So it's right here. How Ooh. cool is that? Yeah, it's Man. Uh, I haven't let it out of my sights. I mean, I've been, I think I'm going to take it to class and I'm going to take it to dinner. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I've been dreaming of this thing since I've been a kid. So it's, uh, it's going to be fun. You know what else is cool about that, Tyler? And I know you've probably given this a lot of thought. The, the incredible names and players who have touched that trophy, right? I mean, you know, your name is on that forever. And you go through the oh, list of people that played the game. I'm sure you just probably stare at it and go, holy man, I can't believe it, man. I'm on the trophy, man, forever. Yeah, well, I would say my first words of that were had a little more profanity in it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, to <laughs> we're hold, I'm holding this trophy, and like Tiger Woods and Matt Kuchar all had it in their possession for a year, and it's just it's so cool. I mean, just to I feel like I'm gripping history right now, and you are. That's that's. I think I'm going to leave it at a tech for a while and then I'm going to bring it to other places like my clubs and stuff like that. But I might put a little mm. camera system in there. So I always know what's happening to it. I love this hey, thing I, so much. I got, I, I got an idea for you. I really do. You know, we had Rachel Keen on the show uh, two weeks ago. And of course she took care of business on the ladies side of the North and South. And she sent us one of these uh, two on two coins, right? Okay. So, so I'm thinking, well, I mean, she was very gracious to send us one of these uh, when you get tired of driving around Atlanta with that thing riding shotgun with you, just send it up here to the uh, basement and we'll showcase it on the show. So whenever you get tired yeah, of it, I'll, we'll take it for what? I'll, I'll give it to Hep and he'll, I'll, I'll make sure he gets it to you guys. Um, <laughs> but at least I can watch it on TV. So Right. Yeah, I, right. It's, <laughs> That's exactly right. Hey, hey Tyler, have, have you walked up to Andy and go, Andy, I see your name on here. I think they misspelled it wrong. <laughs> no, he had, we haven't. Um, I probably will give him a little crap talk, but uh, no, it's just good to be in such great company as Andy because he's such a good kid, um, and I'm so happy mm. to be friends with him. And he couldn't be a better human being. And this tournament changes people, and it changed them for the better, and it turned him into just a great, great teammate, great family member, and great mm. friend. Well, all right. I want to before we close here, Tyler. I want you to know that you know my partner here is also an ACC golf letter winner from mm -hmm. Clemson University mm -hmm. a few years ago. A few years ago, Coach Penley at Clemson was actually uh, one of his uh, <clears throat> roommates slash teammates slash mentors. Is that about right, Pat? Mentor, absolute mentor. mentor. Yeah. on and off the course. Uh, so, so Tyler, what if uh, – Pac has often said on this show that he has not had a bad shot in 23 years. Is that right, Pac? I have not hit a bad shot in 23 years. Yes. Well, so, yeah. So, Tyler, here would be my question. Nine holes against Pac, you think you could take the man? Oh. Please. I don't know. I mean, if he's anything like what I heard Penley is, it's going to be a tough fight. Uh, You're right. But I, I, I heard Penley's awesome, so I'm, 
I'd I'd love to play a match with you, and uh, hopefully we get to do it soon. Uh, but eight, 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 I'll eight always talent. show this bad boy, so I'll give you a little. A little more yeah. nerves coming down the stretch. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you what's going to be annoying, Tyler. If you and I ever get on the links and you start marking your ball with the USAM trophy, I'm going to be PO'd at you. I'm going to say, dude, could you move that thing too, uh, too, to the right, to the right, to the right, whatever the case yeah, may I'll, be. I'll, I'll bring it just for you. How about that? Uh, I like it. Well, listen, congratulations. Oh. That's just incredible playing, not only out in the West Coast, out in Oregon, but what you did at Pinehurst and – uh, your team's fantastic. It's an incredible program, and you're now part of the unbelievable legacy of just tremendous Georgia Tech golfers. And uh, we're proud of you from an ACC perspective. I'm proud of you as a former golfer. Uh, but, again, uh, I'm going to have to get, like, 25 shots aside if you and I hook up for nine. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks, guys, so much. Um, Coach has always said such great regards about the show, and I'm glad I've been on it. You got it, man. Wish you the best. Well, we'll Thank you, you too.